The Oregon Ducks are in a tough situation. I know last Saturday, the Ducks must now face the number three ranked Washington Huskies. After a season ending injury to Danny O'Neill, head coach Rich Brooks continues to search for a starting quarterback. Though displaying a powerful arm, junior Brett Salisbury injured a shoulder in practice this week and is out for today's game. While the defense has played well at times, the three and three Ducks are trying to avoid possessing a losing record for the first time in four years. For the Huskies, their mission remains clear. After Cal gave them all they could handle, their goal is the Rose Bowl. Unheralded Jay Berry grabbed the spotlight after rushing for 143 yards and a touchdown against the Golden Bears. The Killer Bees, Berry and Bryant will have open season on the Ducks today. The challenge for the Huskies is to stay unbeaten and run for the Roses. Hello again, everybody. I'm Don Foyer, along with Chuck Nelson and the voice of the Oregon Ducks, Todd McKim, here on Prime Sports Northwest. It's great to have him up here. We've been friends for many, many years, and we always look forward to these broadcasts when both teams, of course, are on Prime Sports Northwest. We get to have a reunion of sorts when we have these broadcasts. Now, normally, this is one of the greatest rivalries in the country, and usually you can say, throw out the records, it doesn't matter, but when you bring in the ingredients of injuries, guys, I think that's really decimated Oregon, hasn't it, Todd? Oregon has been decimated both uh, psychologically and physically. When you look at the injuries, you're talking about starters. First of all, offensively, the Ducks are down to their third-string quarterback, losing O'Neill and Salisbury. David Collinsworth is their best offensive lineman. Defensively, they've lost the front three of Cummins, Labonte, and Woods. Some thought that was maybe the best defensive line in the Pac-10 coming in and one of the best in the country. Now, as far as the quarterbacks, we thought Salisbury would play today. He gets injured. Now we're going to see another Musgrave, Doug. That, that's right. Doug Musgrave is the brother of Bill Musgrave. And if he has the same kind of success uh, against the Huskies as did his brother, maybe Oregon has a chance this afternoon. But he has never started a college game, a transfer from Michigan. He's got his hands full this afternoon. Speaking of hands full, inside linebacker, this man amazes me. Joe Farwell, badly injured all week with an ankle or all season, and he's not very heavy, and he still plays well. He hasn't practiced much. It has affected his play, yet he is still the leading tackler. And here's a guy that plays inside linebacker at about, and we are being generous, 200 pounds. <laughs> and he's going against people, 290, running backs, 230, 240. It's amazing. He's an outstanding athlete. The Pac-10 standings, I think it's time to look at that. We're about midway through the season. And it's no secret Washington's on top, of course. 3-0 and as far as conference play, 6-0 and overall. Then the rest of them, California, good shape. UCLA coming on. Arizona State, USC, and Chuck. And then, of course, Oregon uh, now at 1-2 and two as they struggle with the injuries. Well, Washington, obviously, the big game last week against California. Two unbeatens, two top seven ranked teams. Washington with a big win there. But they've got five conference games left, left to go. Obviously, a rival game here with Oregon. Like you said, anything can happen. Usually, Oregon in a tough situation here today. But when you talk about Washington, the last couple of years, you want to talk about the running game. And that's Jay Berry, who came up with 143 big ones last week. Pac-10 Player of the Week for that effort between Jay Berry, who is listed as a co-starter, along with Bean O'Brien. You're talking about more production la than last year when the Husky running game and Greg Lewis got all the attention, but they're averaging 163 games or 163 yards a game from the tailback position. And let us not forget, it is still a rivalry. There's still a lot of Oregon fans here, as usual. It's going to be a wonderful game, and third year in a row that Oregon has had to come up here. They'll go to Eugene next See. year. Temperature at 50 degrees, it'll get lower in the forecast, calls for some wet stuff. We shall see whether or not that happens. As far as the series, it's been a long one. In fact, Washington has played Oregon more than any other opponents. And they have the nod in the overall series, 51, 28, and 5 ties. And it's been pretty much all Washington in regards to games here in Seattle. Last time, by the way, that Oregon won was 1980 up here. You may all recall that game. In fact, they thumped the Huskies a pretty good one that day. Some of us recall that game uh, probably more than others. As far as Oregon itself, Rich Brooks now passes Len Casanova with his game today. Mark, as you see, and a good note to that is his last eight years for Brooks is 47 and 39. So he has continued to build this program. As far as Washington, James is 13 and three against the Ducks, 11 and three against Rich Brooks and company. So, time to play football. Oregon won the toss. They deferred. Washington chose to receive high short kick. Tommy Smith at the 18. Looks for the seam, trying to get outside, and is finally brought down at the 36-yard line. For Washington, at quarterback as usual. It will be Billy Joe Hobart, the sophomore out of Puyallup. 
who had a tough game last week against a very good California team, but got the victory. And Mario Bailey with one reception last week, but it was for a touchdown as the Huskies went on to win it. Those are your backs and receivers. So first and 10 now as we go from the 36-yard line. Right off the bat, Jay Barry. Good first down play, close to a first down, up near the 47-yard line. As you see, the defensive line, Romeo Banderson leading that group of young people, the normal starters, all gone due to injury. James Batista leads the group with Connor. Joe Farwell, very light but very tenacious linebacker. Coda, Oliver, Smith, and Eric Castle. Castle, the leader for that secondary. And a very fine one, you might uh, we might point out, for the Oregon Ducks. They'll measure on the approximate 10 yard run Washington 11th in the nation first in the Pac-10 in rushing first and 10 for the 47 yard line again Barry not so much this time right midfield on second down and seven wide receivers to both sides Bailey to the right and McKay to the short side again to Barry he's in trouble Andy Connors almost gets him and then finally Joe Farwell Along with a couple of other ducks make the kill and no gain, maybe six inches of gain. Ball right at midfield. Two wide receivers to the left side. And McKay at the top of your screen. Billy Joe got room to run. He'll do it. Flag goes down. He has the distance for the first down, but let's see what the flag's all about. Motion on Washington. As far as the leaders, you know all these names, certainly. The Killer Bees, Bryant and Barry, the running and... Bailey, who has had a sensational season. 31 catches. Same formation. Two left, one to the right. On third and 12. Going across. Bailey. Very close. Oh, I don't know. We'll see if they give him the first down. He did 13 and got it. Outstanding protection for Billy Joe Hobart. Wide open Mario Bailey. Almost makes a cardinal mistake here. When you've got third and 12, make sure you get your first down. We'll try to get a big play later. First and 10 on the Duck 41-yard line. Little play action. They send a linebacker. Better hurry. McKay with a reception. Who'd they send that time? Was that Coda? That was a, a blitz by the strong safety, Chad Coda, and he hurtled one tackler, but he could not get to Hobart before he released the football. You'll see on the right portion of the screen, right there, Coda number seven, and then he almost got up in time to get Hobart. <laughs> Nice block by Matt Jones, the fullback, to slow him down. now by Hobart. They gain seven. Oh, it's second down and three. Going with the toss sweep. Matt Jones leads the way. Jay Berry carries. Has the first down inside the 30-yard line. You look at the uh, outstanding personnel for Oregon. You look at the inside linebackers, Farwell and Batista, leading in tackles. Ernest Jones didn't even make the trip. He's the leading sack man. And the top interceptor is Smith. On first and ten, more play action and the rollout. A lot of time back against the groove. Oh, Orlando McKay. You see everybody going from left to right on your screen. Hobart's going to throw it back here. Ball thrown out in front of Orlando McKay, and you're looking at the at least a first down inside the five-yard line. So it's second down at ten as Barry goes in motion. So they have three receivers to the left and one to the right. Here comes the blitz. Good defensive call. Trying to go to Mario Bailey. On the and blitz. Instead, Hobart tried to go to the inside man, the hot receiver on the blitz, which he's probably told to do. That's what he's coached uh -huh. to do. But if he had looked at the man in motion, he'd have been able to throw for right, a touchdown. Open. You've got to assume that the defense is going to adjust <laughs> yeah. to that. You can't adjust to that big a mistake. Third down and 10. Got to hurry. Down he goes. 49, Terrell Edwards, the right outside linebacker playing on the left. Comes around for the kill, and it'll be fourth down. Edwards making his first start as an Oregon Duck, replacing Ernest Jones, who was the leading Oregon sack man. He just beats him with speed. Right to the outside, in on Hobart. He never had a chance. Lincoln Kennedy doesn't know what happened. Got around him in a hurry. Not easy to do. 330 pounds of tackle there. you got to move those feet. Mr. Kennedy, not only is that a sack, but it's a big sack, taking the Huskies out of field goal range. Quarterbacks are taught there. At least throw it away. Yeah, the wind was to their back. The punt by Wardell gets a good roll for the Huskies and is brought down to rest near the 12-yard line. Washington getting a little bit of their own medicine with the stunning gambling defense by the Ducks. Well, I think Oregon defensively believes their front three cannot put enough pressure on Hobart to uh, make him throw the ball away or throw bad passes. They have to apply pressure, and you'll see on third and long situations, they'll come with five, six, seven people. They've got First. nothing to lose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's interesting how the crowd gets more excited about the defense than the offense. And they like to disrupt the offense 
with the noise there in Husky Stadium, of course. Receivers one to each side. And they go to Sean Burwell on the first carry. Sean, an outstanding running back. He, too, been fighting the injury bug with the bad ankle. As we see the starting lineups, Burwell, who carried the last time, Juan Shedrick at fullback, the split end, Harris, Anthony Jones, and Jeff Thomas, a very good tight end. And the big folks up front might remember Steve Harden, folks up here in the Northwest, out of Snohomish, Richard Freshman playing at the tackle. Anthony Jones to the right side. Long count by Doug Musgrave in his first start, going back to throw. His receiver stepped out of bounds. Go back and see what he can find going upstairs. Defensively, Andy Mason with a good game against California. Also, Tyrone Rogers, Steve Edmond, you know about him. Donald Jones, Jaime Field, a sensational effort against the Bears. Hoffman and Fraley in the linebacker core. And then your secondary, as you see. It is third down and nine with three wide receivers to the right side. Musgrave going to throw again. Across the middle. Burwell. Rich Brooks' punter is Tommy Thompson, who's averaging a little over 38 yards per. And Bino Bryant is back to receive. Bino getting higher in the Pac-10 rankings as the season goes along. Good punt. Nose just coming over on the spiral back to the 36-yard line. Bryant has to sit down on it after four. Well, Tommy Thompson may be as valuable a weapon for Oregon today as anybody else. He was a second-team All-Pac-10 selection a year ago as a true freshman. And I would imagine he'll punt the ball a lot today. And if he can do a good job, that'll certainly help out the defense. 9.26 remaining in the first quarter. No score. Jay Berry trying to challenge the inside. And I think Romeo Banderson was one of the first there. Second down and eight now from the 38. Billy Joe going to the air. McKay, little inside slant going against Daryl Smith. Orlando McKay has improved dramatically on this time of route from last year. You can see finding the scene, the ball thrown just inside the leaping Chad Cota and just in front of the defensive corner. Orlando McKay, a much better inside route receiver this year. First and 10, Barry. One man to beat, and that was Daryl Smith. And of course, Eric Castle coming over to Phil. First down and 10 from the Duck 40-yard line. And again, DeBerry trying to find something, but nothing there. Gary Williams, number 54, and Andy Connor. The outside linebacker, they'll give him one yard. I, is, I would expect the Huskies to really test Oregon in the middle. They've got a nose tackle that's 5'11", 250 pounds, an inside linebacker that's 200 pounds. And if nothing else, you're going to keep those people at home and they can't fly around the ball. Huh? And so I would expect the Huskies to really try to pound that middle. Point well taken. Wide receivers, one to each side. There again, they challenge it, and look who rose to the occasion. Hey, I'm impressed with Bandison, the right end. He's done well getting in there. Well, Barry on the play that time, but... Vanderson stirred things up. Vanderson played soccer in the Netherlands, where he was born, and then came to the United States as a foreign exchange student, played football, and at 6'5", 270 pounds, it's hard to imagine him on a soccer field as a midfielder, but he would be rather imposing, to say the least, and he's playing very well to start the game. He could clog up a goal now, I tell you that. <laughs> He'd fill up the whole circle of midfield. So it's third and nine for Washington. At the Oregon 39, three receivers, Hobart looking right, got a man close to a first down. Let's see where they mark it. You can see help from everybody, lots of time. Well thrown ball to the outside of Curtis Gaspar. You see Muhammad Oliver inside, Billy Joe Hobart reading that play and throwing the ball outside where Gaspar is the only man to make a play. McKay and Bailey both to the left side this time. First and 10, just inside the 30 of Oregon. Little option. And the pitch to Barry. And nice coverage again by Joe Farwell, number 51. Second down and seven. Same formation. This time they go with Darius Turner getting the call at fullback. Third down again for Washington. They've seen a lot of those today. Third and four with Bailey and McKay again to the left side. High formation in the backfield. Bailey. Oregon with a nice scheme as they sent number 45, James Batista. And tight end. Two yards to go. Bailey wide to the left side. Again, the toss sweep. Bailey! Or rather, Barry. I don't know. You can see, again, aggressive play by Oregon. They get upfield a little bit, try to stuff the play. Right here, the spin Castle. move and the fall forward. Eric Castle trying to put the wrap on as you see the measurement. Boy, if they make it, it's not by much. I like what I see Oregon doing defensively today. 
they're attacking. Well, again, they've got nothing to lose. Right. Size-wise, athlete-wise, this is a better team, but we're gonna we're gonna mess them up before they can get started. And their problems haven't been defensively this year. Right. On first and ten, Dean O'Brien with the call, short yardage. That was the same formation as last play. A little tighter formation. Bailey, the only wide receiver, on second down and eight. Hobart still with it. Wants to go in the corner. Bailey. Touchdown, Washington. 17-yard play. Well, we just mentioned this matchup, and they went to it. The post-corner route. You see Daryl Smith gets turned around. Not exactly beat that badly, but Mario Bailey just makes a better adjustment on the ball here. In fact, Smith it looked like Smith went for the interception as opposed to just trying to knock it down. Travis Hansen, 19 of 21 this year. This type of rivalry game, Washington and Oregon. Here are what the coaches think about this game. Oregon's always played very well in our game. Uh, our, both teams look at it as a rival game, and uh, uh, we have Oregon players on our team, and, and they have Washington players on theirs, and uh, we're close and in the same league, so it, it'll, it'll be a, a lot of fun out there. Well, Washington uh, is the best-looking team I've seen in this conference ever. Uh, going back to when I played in leather helmets at Oregon State, uh, coached a long time, and uh, they're as good-looking football team as I've ever seen play in this conference. Uh, it's not a good uh, scenario for us as uh, taking a battered and bruised team uh, with a lot of injuries into Seattle, uh, uh, struggling as we are, uh, particularly on the offensive side of the ball, facing the best defense in the country. Jason Crabb with the short kickoff. Muhammad Oliver at the six. Good day. It looked like Hillary Butler got a piece of him, number 45, and that slowed him up. Good bloodline. We know that. If he could play half as good as his brother did, half as well. Just tear that nameplate off of the back <laughs> of the old jersey and put it on the new one. Change the number. For those interested in knowing where Bill is at, he was originally drafted by the Cowboys, then was released and has been signed as a practice player by the San Francisco 49ers. And that'll work out better for him in the long run anyway. You can learn a lot from that San Francisco yeah. offensive staff. Not bad working under Joe Montana when he's healthy, too. First and ten now for the Oregon Ducks with two receivers to the left side. Musgrave wanting to throw on first down. A nice safe pass outside. Anthony Jones, number 18. Well, a year ago, Anthony Jones broke into his own right here in Seattle against the Huskies. He had six receptions as he was uh, filling in for the injured Michael McClellan. Here, the just a short out pattern, a little crossing pattern between the two receivers. He's open, and Oregon gets its first first down. To the first ball. and 10 on the 34-yard line. Two receivers right side on the ground. Burwell penetration and purple jerseys all over the place. Watch the number 13 if we can see it. Watch the pile stack up. There's yeah. Andy Mason. That's what did it. Steve Emman all he has to do is pick up the leftovers. Yet another TFL tackle for loss for Washington. They need 11 yards. Three receivers to the right. Musgrave has time. Anthony Jones. That was a great Go. read by Musgrave because initially the man was not open. He pump faked, let the receiver clear the backer, and then found the crease in the zone. Watch the little pump here as he clears actually the safety and the linebacker, Hoffman right there. Good reception held onto the ball, so now it's third and short. Walter Bailey delivering that blow rather than Falco. He was around behind. Walter Bailey, a big game for him being from Portland. Third down in a short one. Jones to the right. That's it for receivers. And there's movement. Rich Brooks pulls everybody off of the field. Here, get a look at the left side of your screen. Matt Martin, number 71, getting a little anxious there. So instead of third and one, you've got third and six. All the tight ends and fullbacks come off the yeah. field. All the little guys go back on. Trips to the right. Third down and six, as Todd said. Whole different page in the playbook now. Burwell. Chico Fraley takes a shot and misses, but there are two more right there waiting for him. It's Dave Hoffman. By the time the play gets out to the corner, it looks like there's room, but those inside people can close so quickly. Yeah. You see Chico Fraley spins him around and then take your pick. Flag down. Ball is blocked. Dana Hall's the man who got a piece of it. Out of bounds it goes. Let's wait and see what the call is. Did Smith do it? I thought it might have been Dana Hall. Tommy Smith got a hand on him, but one of the reasons he might have been there was he may have lined up <laughs> offside. A little early. Fourth and one. The fourth and one, excuse me. Apparently it's against Oregon. Ooh. No, they Never mind. Interesting. Smith on the right side of your screen. 
comes inside, Chad Coda. First rule of punt blocking is make him go outside, make him take the long route. Chad Coda, Coda broke that rule. McKay comes out to the left side with Bailey to the right. Jones. And Andy Connor is there, number 47. They're not playing too badly, but they've been put in position by their offense to, to defend such a short field. Last week against Cal, the Bears had the ball first and 10 inside the 50 to start drives nine times and scored twice. On second and seven, Bino Bryant, a little shuffle there, waiting to see what would open up. Bino Bryant, a guy that can score from any distance. Bailey and McKay to the left on third down and three. Bino, uh-oh, look out. Oh, he got the first down. The beat goes on. First and 10 now on the 34 of Oregon. Bryant getting the call one more time. Chad Cota, the first to get in there, number seven. After a four-yard game, three seconds. Bryant and Nett right there. Again, good penetration by Bandison, number 97, slowing it up. That's it for the first quarter. Washington comes up with seven points. The Ducks holding on, playing some good football so far. Welcome back. I'm Don Poyer with Chuck Nelson. Todd McKim joining us in the booth this afternoon. Kind of giving him a day off. He gets to have some fun today. Instead of having to call the whole Oregon game, he gets to sit up here, and relax, drink coffee, work on his suntan. This has been a tough one for Oregon. Only 12 points in the second quarter all year to Washington's 92. And they've given up only 20. It's amazing. Washington still hasn't given up any points in the fourth quarter. Third down and five from the 29. Wanting to go deep. Bailey touchdown, Washington. And so Daryl Smith, the all-time or the leading interceptor for Oregon, doesn't know which way they're going to go. You notice what Hobart did? He looked off the safety, Eric Castle. Yeah. And Castle could never get deep enough to get back in time. Extra point is blocked. Why don't and they pick it up and try to run with it? I was going to say, they can pick it up and go. Oregon has nothing to lose there. The, the, fifth, wrong direction. the fifth extra point that the Huskies have missed. 14-54 remaining in the second quarter. Oliver inside his 10, still rolling. And admit by that purple rain as he's brought down. You know, I like Musgrave, though. He's not making any silly mistakes. He sh looks very poised for a guy with... Very, very little major college experience. You hate to say it, but he looks a lot like his brother. I was going to say the same thing. You can tell he's got the thinking ability that his brother had. Not a not a real strong arm guy, but waits and waits and throws the ball where it's supposed to be. First and 10 from the 20. A wide receiver to each side. They go to the backfield and Burwell, who gets about three, maybe two or three, out beyond the 22 yard line. Tommy Smith down, too, after making that play. Tommy Smith. And if Burwell had exploded into the hole, let's look at it here. Now watch Burwell. He comes in with his head down and trying to hold on to the ball. And basically, Smith just happened to be in the way. The first four games. <laughs> it looks like a stinger, too, the way he's whipping his arm around. Second down, Burwell. Big opening as he gets outside up to the 30-yard line and brought down by Shane Palcoa. Much what California succeeded at doing was the quick opener, the quick slant like that. Of course, that's how Chapman got the big, a big TD last week. You see both Bowie and Harden pull to clear the hole. We'll forget about that offside. Let's get as many bodies as we can, as many blockers as we can over on the play side. Anthony Jones wide to the right side. They only need one. And it's the fullback who got it. Juan Shetter. They know each other. <laughs> well, they will by the end of the day quite well. 28 carries coming into the game to the left. And Jones to the right on first and 10 from the 33. There goes Burwell in motion. Little finesse pass, but out of bounds. There's going to be no interception. Rich Brooks said this week that one of the reasons that he got the start was he just wanted a guy that wasn't going to kill him. That's wasn't right. going to kill me. I don't want big mistakes made. And we've got one down on the field right now. And it'll go against Oregon. Second down. Second down and 15. They put Burwell out to the right side with two other wide receivers. And now Musgrave is in big time trouble as Steve Entman, number 90, is in there first. A familiar sight, Steve Entman, in the opposition backfield. Looks like a quarterback draw here. Either that or Donald Jones just beat Musgrave back to his drop. They'll yeah, call it third down and 18. Three wide receivers to the right side. And they play it safe with Burwell right up the middle and nothing doing. Thompson back on his own 10. Comes the feed. They block it again. 
Lewis Jones lands on top of it. Flag comes down late. Chico Fraley with the block punt. We got a penalty against Washington. Assessed after the play. May have been a personal foul. Dead Here ball. we go. Personal foul against Washington. First down and 25. Okay, yeah, so you see, Thompson snap a little high, but doesn't take too long. Chico Fraley takes it right in the bed basket. Boy, these guys get excited then. Lewis Jones falls on the play. Everybody's starting to throw blocks, but the ball is on the ground. You saw the flash across your yeah, screen. Been blocked on that side uh, all three times, last week and this week. So it's first and 10. Check, check that, first and 25. Billy Joe wanting to go for all of it early. Nope, going to lay it off. Got up to Darius Turner. Turner inside the 30 and down to about the 27-yard line. Second down and 18. They have to get down to the 9 for a first down. So they got some work to do. Orlando McKay out of bounds. Defensive coordinator Denny Schuler from Snohomish. They grew up together for Oregon. Okay, they're going against each other. So you've got two guys that are literally brothers going head to head right now. Well, and they were on the same staff at Utah State for right. five years, too, under Bruce Snyder. Yep. Two wide to the right, Gaspard and Bailey. McKay on the far side. Looking for McKay. Got him. Oh, incomplete. What a hit by Daryl Smith, number 20. That's exactly right. Mark. Again, Hober does a good job of looking away from the play and coming back. The ball is right on target. Just a good, solid hit. Helmet on the ball from Daryl Smith, and the ball comes out. Boom. It now will be a field goal attempt by Washington, a 44-yard attempt by Travis Hansen. Almost dead center. Long enough. It is good. Travis Hansen with a 44-yard field goal puts him three for seven for the year. This is bad. Good high kick, but short. From the 10, Burwell. St. Palcoa closes in on 33 total yards for the day. First and 10 from the 27 receivers, one on each side. Musgrave wanting to throw right away. Too far, interception. Walter Bailey, the leader on this team in interceptions, down to the 10, out of bounds at the 9-yard line. But Bailey, of course, from Benson Tech in Portland, was an outstanding high school player, a tremendous athlete, won the long jump championship in the state of Oregon yeah. two consecutive years, and he has been a sensational find for Washington. Comes in, makes a great play, tried to take it in for the score, <laughs> thought he was in, made a great effort, but was out of bounds at the nine, and then I think there'll probably be a penalty against the Huskies, a dead ball foul. Talked Good. about Oregon and what they needed to do was not make big plays. Too much celebrating in the end zone. 24, three receivers to the left. Hober looking for one of them right now. Got a lot of time. Man wide open. Bailey, no. Second down at 24. McKay to the left. Bailey on the near side now with the eye formation. Billy's going to throw again. Swings it off to the side. Matt Jones. And pretty good coverage by Oregon as he gets down to the 25-yard line. Well, only give him one yard. And Coda coming up number seven, the strong safety. He may be the best hitter in that Oregon secondary, a redshirt freshman from Ashland High School, led his team to a state championship two years ago, and he has no respect at all for either <laughs> his body or anybody else's. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rich has recruited some good kids from Lebanon, Oregon, and Ashland, Oregon. Two very good programs. Yeah. Third down and 23. Not been all that good a drive so far for Washington following the interception. Across the middle, McKay open. Still wrestles his way down to. They're going to call it the 11-yard line. I should have been saying first at 24 or 25. Well, and the defense knows that, and they just have to back up to the goal line and play everything in front of them. And Hobart, that offense, has got to hope that throw the ball short and hope one of our guys can turn it into a big play and get it into the end zone. What you do get is Travis Hansen with another shot. And 18-yard line, call it a 28-yard attempt from the left hash mark. And it is good. Great field position, and your defense comes through. You've got the number three defense in the conference against the pass, number four against the rush, but you're sixth in scoring because the other team doesn't, never has to go very far. Donovan Moore carrying and brought down by Dana Hall, number five. First and ten now. 
They keep it on the ground to Burwell, but he is brought down by Dave Hoffman, number 54. Randy Hart, their coach, even says, our defense doesn't begin until we're all two yards into the backfield. This explains numbers like this. Second down and 11. Here comes pressure. They get it over to Brown in time and a first down for Oregon. Nice play by Musgrave. Get a close-up look at Doug Musgrave. And he throws it on his way backwards. It's okay. But it's in the right spot. And Bailey is injured. Bailey was on the bottom of the two Huskies on the play against Brown. They've asked Walter Bailey to make sure his legs can move. You can see Walter Bailey closing here. And here comes Shane Palcoa. Boom. Shane Falcoa delivers the blow to Walter Bailey up around that neck and shoulders. See a better angle here. Boom. Just compress that, compress that neck, compress that head. Well, and you talk about depth. Out goes Walter Bailey, and in comes a former starter, William Doctor. <laughs> That's right. Who has been a settling factor on various occasions coming into this game or into this season. Burwell again. They test Doctor's side. Not much there as Palcoa comes up. He needs 161 yards to tie number 10 Mel Renfro for career yards. We all remember Mel. Wanted to go deep, Musgrave. He was feet on the heat and decided to dump it out in front of Ronnie Harris. Out of trouble. Not all that warm down there for Mr. Musgrave right now either. 7-17 remaining in the second quarter. Three receivers right. We might have a Husky in there too soon as they try to go out to Harris on the right side. Boy, I could have sworn. <laughs> he wouldn't be able to compete anymore because you only get one false start. But in football, you come back and you just get five yard penalty and you get another down. All you Oregon guys, they all <laughs> they want to talk about is track. Yeah. I'll tell you. Yeah. See Donald Jones at the top of your screen gets that head start on Todd Gettison. Third and three, two receivers right. Still going to throw, could get it himself. He got it. First down. Oregon. First and ten. Keeping it down there, Tommy Smith back there waiting for Burwell. Defense is designed to cause disruption before anybody can think about how to react. You can see Tommy Smith just busts it, gets inside Brandon Jumper before the block can be. Makes it tough for those running backs to set up a move when all, all they can do is get the ball and go down. Musgrave looks at second and 15 on his own 45. Got a man open, but behind, well behind Brian Brown. Third and 15, trips to the right side. Here comes the pressure, laying it off to Donovan Moore, and that right there. He got through and around the blockers. Watch the blockers set up to the left side of the screen, and he nice right through there before Heath Howington can put a hand on him, and that disrupted the entire play. Moore never had a chance. That is a textbook tackle. See here. some smoke coming out of those Husky oh. helmets as they line up <laughs> to rush the Duck punt team. This time he gets it away. It's a good one. Bryant takes it back on his own 11-yard line and called the fair catch. 5-10 remaining here in the first half. And the Huskies lead it, 19-zip. 10 remaining, Don Poyer, Chuck Nelson, Todd McKim, first down. Jay Berry gets the call for the Huskies, who gets it out to about the 10-yard line. Eric Castle, one of them in there, defensively, all along with Joe Farwell, number 51. Farwell with 48 tackles coming in for this contest. I don't know if we touched on it, but the last three weeks he's been playing in games with literally no practice during the week because of his uh, bad ankle. Second down and seven. Matt Jones. Not much there. They try to bang their way out. That's the day so far. The work of these gentlemen now on third down and two. First down. Barry to keep it going. All the way out to the 35-yard line. Coda had a shot at him, number seven. Three consecutive running plays to get the ball out of their own end. See some backups in there on the offensive line, but it makes no difference. Andy Peterson pulls on the play. Jay Berry has first down yardage before he even has to elude Castle. And he's doing well now. First and ten, ball on the 35. Everybody spread out across the field, and the bang on Mario Bailey. You see Mario Bailey goes around Andy Connor, just settles in the area between the linebacker Connor and in front of Eric Castle, the safety. Castle comes up and delivers the blow and a little sandwich job with Castle and Connor. Bailey in the middle, but it is a Husky first down. From the 46, Castle with two interceptions this year. That one overthrown, intended for Orlando McKay and defended by Muhammad Oliver. 
McKay to the near side with Bailey and Gaspar to the left. Going to McKay for a little quick opener to midfield. Right the ticking away at 3.06 here in the first half. And it's third down and five. One on one. McKay against Oliver. Looks like Oliver won. Interception for Mohamed Oliver, number 11. That's his first of the year. Great play by the left corner, the senior. Man to man coverage, and Oliver was the man. Billy Joe Holbert saw it was man to man and checked off to this play. The ball just underthrown. If you're going to throw this route, you've got to throw it out where Orlando McKay and his speed can make the play. The defender has got to think about the ball. He's got to get out of his break. Orlando McKay tries to make a play. Well, but Muhammad Oliver has inside position on an underthrown pass for that route. Billy did not do exactly what Musgrave did. Keep it on the outside shoulder. That's right. First and 10 for Oregon. Good play by Oliver. Ball on the 22 with 2.26 left here in the first half, and a flag goes down. So they'll have to back it Dead up. Ball, ball start on the offense. So the timer put three seconds back on the clock. Three so seconds. Three on the clock. seconds back up on the wall as Rich Brooks, in his 15th year, he came into the conference at the same Oregon. time Terry Donahue Move did. They both came in two years after Don James did. First which down, made Don James, well, he was in the league maybe three years, and they three called him the dean down. of the back ten coaches, but everybody left. Has the respect of just about everybody around the country. Yes. Always mentioned that one of those coaches that could get the most out of his talent. Well, they're, they're always, always competitive. And whenever there's a big opening somewhere, they're saying, well, what about Rich Brooks? What about Rich Brooks? What about him, Todd? Is he happy where he's at? Is it he's very happy. His family is happy. He's got... Uh, uh, a good situation in Oregon uh, in that the expectations until this year haven't been that high, but he's real competitive. He'd like to uh, have his football team a little bit better. First and 15, and of course the injuries decimated this team this year. It's hard to coach against injuries, real hard. Good pressure by Steve Hempman on the pass. It's incomplete, intended for Brian Brown, covered by Dana Hall, but They've got new facilities now. I mean, Outson Stadium is a wonderful place for football. That's not the new facility. The administration. Yeah, that yeah, that is wonderful. Out adjacent to the stadium. Big, huge weight room. I think it's uh, maybe the second largest weight room in the country. Uh, Nebraska might be the biggest one. Musgrave has done so many things that are not going to show up in the stat sheet that I think have pleased Rich Brooks today. He showed poise when he's uh, made a bad play. It's been a bad play that the Huskies couldn't capitalize on. He's made good decisions. Second down at 15. Musgrave has three receivers to the right side. Keeps it on the ground. And Burwell doesn't get much. It'll be third and very long with 2.11 remaining in the first half. Under two minutes to go in the half, too. They'd be perfectly content. They don't care whether they get outside the 20. Let's just hang on to it for the rest of the half. Third down and 12. Draw to Burwell. Boom. <laughs> Steve Entman. Swatting at him like flies. Entman is so big and so strong. Incredible line. player. Got a timeout called by Washington with a minute 31 remaining. What number 90 come in from the left of your screen. Just throws him down. So much mayhem being caused up front. You've got crossing patterns and the loopers and tackles but, and everybody's going different directions. Everybody, and how many, how many you come guys? out of that pile and all of a sudden you got 300 pounds of uh, number 90. But this man was almost on his knees and he still threw Burwell down. And Burwell is not exactly chopped liver at 190 pounds. My goodness. Well, the Oregon coach has said this week, uh, in particular offensive line coach Neil Zimbukas, that if a uh, defensive lineman should ever win the Heisman Trophy. Steve Entman's the guy. He's that good. He's the best football player in the country in a year in which there aren't that many outstanding offensive players. I would concur. I agree. The only defensive player continually mentioned in USA Today as for one publication as a potential Heisman candidate. Fourth down. Thompson back to punch. And he's back on his eight-yard line. Look out for the pressure. Dean O'Brien, midfield, ooh. Shane Falcoa getting dangerously close. I don't know where he thinks he's going, but... I think he thought one of the Huskies might touched have touched it. Touched it, maybe, him. yeah. Maybe. Brandon <laughs> like Jumper. in the end zone. Well, Brandon, <laughs> 35, this is Brandon Jumper, by the way, out of Eatonville. And, and remember, he led the state in scoring up here as a senior in high school. He knows where the end zone is. That's right. Any Brandon. chance he gets. 
You he's, see open field, I'm going to pick it up and go. Well, that's just it. He hasn't scored a I touchdown for say, the Ducks. Yeah. Hasn't scored one this year. There's my chance. And they're just clarifying on the field that the ball was not touched by the receiving team. 33-yard punt by Thompson. First and 10 from the 45. Three receivers left. Holbert. Look out. Banderson's got him. What an individual effort by Romeo Banderson. That's his third sack of the year. Actually, he may have been in on a couple earlier today. Banderson just pushing, pushing Chris Wrong and back into Billy Joe Hover. Billy trying to backpedal out of the way. Couldn't, couldn't backpedal fast enough. Second and 10. Got another flag down as they complete one to Mario Bailey. Remember, this holding penalty will be marked off from the spot of the foul, which was yes. in the Husky backfield. So you got one sack on Chris Wrong and the man who gave up the sack on the previous play once again on Vanison just absolutely hauls him down. Not a tough call for anybody in a striped shirt to make. Much farther left, folks. Second down and 41. And another flag down as Jay Berry gets the call up to the 20, but I think it might have been Terrell Edwards getting in there a little too soon. Very often. You get a look here on the right of your screen. Indeed, number 60. Andy Peterson kind like of re guys resets, does a little shake. Boy, dead big. ball, ball start on the oh, offense. Just, Repeat first down. They put 53 seconds on the board, and if I remember correctly, the Huskies had 52 seconds when the first play of this drive started. Uh, minute 20. Yeah, minute, minute 20, 20 when it was uh, 52 seconds after the uh, second play, so I'm yeah, not sure just, exactly what's happening with the clock. They added some more. <laughs> I think once you get over you get 40 loose. yards, you've got more than 40 yards for a first down. Yeah, I start adding time. time. <laughs> Second and 46. <laughs> Matt Jones fights his way out to about the 17. Some of the games from this series. Yeah, this is the last five years. Home team winning on every occasion. Yeah, they've split the last four. And this series, where it may not be the yelling type of uh, intense series like a Washington, Washington State, it's, it is, though, one of the most physical series or rivalries I've ever seen. You ever want to see some incredible hitting, and this goes back into the 50s and 60s, Washington against Oregon. Never fail. Well, we've seen a couple people go down for the Huskies today, something we haven't seen very often. After the game, it's third down and 39. Barry. And Cote is there along with Anderson again. My goodness. What a play, and another timeout by Oregon. 38 seconds remaining. Wardell, John Wardell, back to punt. And he will be on his 12. Brian Brown back to receive on his 35. Let's see, we got 10 people for Oregon coming on the rush. Wobbly punch. Brown stays in bounds at the 40. And on the 46. Let's see what the Ducks can come up with. Wants to go to the other side as Jones. Good. Down to the Husky 38 yard line. The red zone, meaning they have not allowed anyone to run a play from scrimmage inside their own 20 yard line. Now, Cal scored last week, but they didn't run anything from inside the Husky 20. Closest they got was the 22, 23 yard line. First and 10 from the 38. Same formation as Burwell to the right side. They go to Thomas in the tight end, and Dave Hoffman knocks it away. If you get some points on the board, the Huskies have only given up three points at home all year. In this quarter? No, in three full games at home. Oh, yeah, exactly. Second down, and they need 10. Option, Burwell. Fumble! Dana Hall's got it. And he'll be called down there at the 41 with seven seconds remaining. Well, that was a great hit, but a bad decision by Burwell. If he had cut earlier, he had a lane. Instead, he was indecisive. The tackle was made. He loses the football and Oregon scoring opportunity. Now, you tell me, do you think he can cut this ball inside behind Tattersall 64? Sure. Yes. Instead, he runs into the tackle. Either that or give him the leg inside and then go outside. Not all that many turnovers, really, in this game so far. One play. They're going to go for it all. Orlando McKay. Oh, he got his hands on it. No time remaining. Well, he wouldn't have gotten into the end zone, but it would look awfully good on the stat sheets. And the highlight reel, yeah, too. Yeah, recruiting tape, but it would look good. 19 to nothing. The Huskies, third ranked in the country and undefeated. 
but they uh, got plenty of hits and plenty of uh, effort on the part of the Oregon Ducks against them in the first half. The injuries half. are really telling as far as Oregon Chuck. Well, that Oregon defense, though, which is one of the areas that they've had a lot of injuries, the defensive line specifically, has played pretty well. Washington has had three drives in the first half that resulted in negative yardage. So the defense, wow. even though they're not getting very good field position, they've been playing well with what they've had. Two touchdown well, passes. This was the first one on man-to-man -man coverage against Daryl Smith. Once again, Billy Joe Hobart just throws the ball out where Mario Bailey can make a play, and he's just turned into an incredible athlete, a big play receiver for Washington. That's his 10th career touchdown. That tied it for the school record in a single season. Let's look statistically now at the first two quarters of play and total yards. Washington with 196 to 75 for the Ducks. Turnovers, a couple, as Todd alluded to earlier. Penalties on Washington, two of those coming after play. One, uh, excessive celebration, they called it in the end zone after the interception by Walter Bailey. And then another one, just a personal foul on, on, on another takeaway. And remember, Doug Musgrave, his first start ever, major college football at quarterback, and he's going against that number one team defensively in the nation. All right, second half coming off. We'll have it for you right here at Husky Stadium in just a minute. Stay with us. Oregon, as expected, chose to receive here in the third quarter after deferring on the coin toss at the beginning of the game. Some of the Oregon cheerleaders made it up for the game. A lot of Oregon fans in the closed end of the field. Crab's boot, another high one. From inside the 10. And a flag goes down. And we've got a hold on the return team for Oregon possession so far. Two block punts. And word has it, yes indeed, there he is. Kyle Croston in a quarterback now at 6'2", 194 pounds, redshirt freshman, a broken finger. He's out of Vancouver. And on first down, they go to Shedrick, the fullback. Broken finger for Doug Musgrave, evidently. My goodness sakes, that's the third injured quarterback for Oregon this year, Todd. It is unbelievable. It's bad enough or tough enough to try to beat Washington with your best personnel. But when you are now playing a guy who two weeks ago was a backup free safety, they moved him to defense. And who is the backup quarterback at this point? Uh, Bobby Brothers, a, a wide receiver who yeah. was a quarterback through his first three years. So your top, your top two quarterbacks are guys that up until a couple of weeks ago weren't quarterbacks. Second down and six. Thurston is the quarterback. And he'll roll out and throw. Got time, got a receiver. Ronnie Harris couldn't hold on. It would have been good for the first down. Musgrave was six of 13 for 57 yards. And one interception, not bad for your first collegiate start. And in all honesty, he probably showed more poise in the first two quarters of this game than maybe any of the other quarterbacks has shown over any extended period of time in any of the other games. Danny O'Neill had some good games at Texas Tech, Washington State, but he also made some bad decisions. I don't think Musgrave, that Musgrave made more than maybe one or two bad decisions. Six, maybe six for 15 is all, but the plays that he didn't make sometimes are the ones that are big. They're down in six as Jones goes in motion. So two receivers to the right now. Looking downfield and deep. He's got Jones, but overthrows. As Thompson is back on his three. Good protection. Wobbly punt. Bryant at the duck 48. Trying to get to the fence. Goes up the inside. Now out. Can't come up with it, though. As Willie Tate, a backup tight end, made the tackle. Contrast these starting points from Washington possessions with the graphic we saw previously of the Oregon no possession. touchdowns of any drive Four. starting in the Oregon end of the field. Four out of eight drives they score. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. The penalty, they call it on the defensive team. So it was enough yardage for yeah, the first down. Before, if, it's, if the holding penalty takes place before the ball is punted, they're right. still on defense. Then yeah. they're still considered a defensive right. penalty. And possession had not changed yet. So it's first and 10 for Oregon. Take Good them anywhere you can get them. Ball on the 27. Burwell. Little off tackle play. Jaime Fields, one of the first to get him and slow him down. Anymore. So it's second down and six. Two receivers sent to the right side. Huskies, look at that. They got nine people up on the line. Thurston still with it. Pressure. Got a man. Ronnie Harris tipped. Intercepted by Palcoa after the tip by Dana Hall. Palcoa trying to make a nifty move, gets around Jones, gets another block, down to the 31-yard line. 
second before he is brought down by Heath Howard. Tip, tip drill. Tip drill. Tip drill on a ball that was just a little bit underthrown. If uh, Croston lays it out all the way, it might be a touchdown because Jones had Hall beat by about a yard and a half. But, Another. Uh, Great, great play. Another factor to remember, Dana Hall, six foot three. That's an awful big corner. He's got those long arms. That ball might not be underthrown if he's only 5'10". On the toss sweep, Dean O'Brien trying to get away from the pursuit, but Terrell Edwards holds on to one of those ankles. Billy Joe looking at second and seven. A little quick rhythm pass going to Bailey. Has the first down. Billy Joe Homer just playing catch. Three-step drop, get it out there. Mario Bailey again tries the old spin-a-rama move he's been so successful with this year. This time he goes outside. You know, Barry is feeling good to keep it out of the end zone. First and ten, Bryant gets the call, does some bobbing and weaving. This has been a lot of, or a big reason for that. Trying to go outside, Bryant, pretty good pursuit, and Oregon staying home is Oliver, Muhammad Oliver, ball on the 16 of Oregon. Three receivers left side, three Omigos. And signed by Holbert. Across the middle. Oh, nearly intercepted by Oliver. No place to throw it. You can see that Oliver gets the first shot at it, gets two hands on it. McKay cannot react to it quickly enough as the ball Boy, changes flight. Billy was looking all the way, too. See an awful lot of ducks around those Huskies. No place to go. Travis Hansen attempting a 33-yard field goal. He's two for two for the afternoon. And this one is good. Burwell. And just goes out of bounds inside the five. Well, if they take the ball at the 35, that'll be their second best starting field position <laughs> of the game. First and 10 now from the 35. Burwell goes in motion this time. Thurston is the quarterback. And Chico Fraley follows Burwell right back in, and we got a flag thrown on the pile. Well, we got a face mask. Three yard loss. Now let's see what it. Well, that was a, a well-designed play run at the wrong time in that they run a screen when the Huskies were in man-to-man. -man. If they run this when, there you see the penalty right there on the face mask. If they run that when Huskies are in a zone, then you got a little better chance. So Jones will be split wide to the left. Looks like man-to-man -man coverage. Of course, it usually is for the corners for Washington. Burwell, and nothing doing. Looks like Tyrone Rogers was in there undermining. Second and six, they lose one. Croston wants to throw. Got some room now as he tries to get outside and in closes Dana Hall and two others. Paltoa. Good speed. Probably the best athlete amongst the four quarterbacks that started the season for the Ducks. It's not open. Boom. Take it. Get what you can. Third down. They only need two. Need to get out just across the 45. Fumble by Croston and he is met there immediately by Clifford. Fourth down. Thompson back to punt. See if Dino Bryant can spring one. Ten people up on the rush for Washington. Ooh, high snap. Wobbly punt. Could be turning. Trying to get to that ball. Oh, he's got a lot of white jerseys. Oh, the Cardinals sin. Can he get around? No, he's not going to make it. Number four, Herman O'Barry with him. You could see what Dino was trying to do. You can also see that he wasn't going to be able to do it. <laughs> he was also one step forward and two back. See out here, outside the 20-yard line, trying to make something happen. Herman O'Berry with good enough speed to not allow Bino get around the corner. <laughs> Bino the angle on him, gets yeah. put into the back penalty. And you That's end up back on your own six-yard line. That's a return of minus 17 yards. Not, uh, not good for Bino's nationally ranked punt return average, but it also helps that net return, net punting average for Oregon. Matt Jones out of bounds on a play designed to get maybe five or six. Once again, the Huskies backed up in their own end. We're just going to run the ball and try to get ourselves some room. Matt Jones not happy with just getting a little bit of room. Once again, the cutback that Darius Turner was so successful with last year. That Oregon pursuit all goes the other way. Matt Jones gets outside. Eric Castle drags him down from behind. And oh, do the Huskies have room to operate now. 35-yard run by Matt Jones. First to 10 now on the 48. Bino Bryant. 
And he is met by number 50, Salila Malapai. Malapai, I'll get it right. Well, Jones is one of those guys, of course, that hails from the state of Oregon, so you know he enjoyed that run from Central Catholic was the state <laughs> player of the year. And, That's right. You know, he doesn't get a chance to get many opportunities to play against Oregon. He wants to make the most of it today. Washington with a ways to go to yeah. get up to their to their average. A lot of time left. Hobart to Curtis Gaspard spins around Muhammad sure. Oliver after the pass to Gaspard with 7.08 remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 now from the 43. Three receivers left. There goes Bryant to the right. He'll be the only receiver other than the tight end. Hobart is going to his tight end. Aaron Pierce down to the 40-yard line, gain of three. Season. That's his first catch here today. He's too good a weapon oh, yeah. to not be a part of that Husky offense, but then Orlando McKay and Mario Bailey have been so successful on the outside. Hobart had to get rid of it. That's because O'Berry, again, it's O'Berry. He seems to be the man who's not fooled by anyone today. Well, he's a redshirt freshman, and he is going to be outstanding. In fact, uh, in the preseason, he was pushing Daryl Smith for a starting spot there at the corner. And Herman O'Berry is a tough kid. He's not big, but he's strong. In fact, during one of the preseason drills, they were over at the practice field. He dove head first in one of those uh, chain link fences to, to try for a ball and bounced right up. He's just a tough kid. Huskies 5 of 12 on third down conversions today. It's third and six. Hobart wanting to get a lot of yardage again. Goes to Aaron Pierce again for the first down. Knocked him over. <laughs> Three consecutive throws to Aaron Pierce. Two successfully. It's nice to have that arm strength there. You can see if that ball isn't thrown that hard, you've got the defenders who are able to close that gap. Aaron Pierce catches that ball as much out of protection out of his, as a, out of a desire for the first down. He may have saved Eric Castle's life. <laughs> He saved Tony Pirro, the equipment man. The castles of pulling that football out of that face mask, too. First and ten. You know, Bryant, and down with a knee. Evidently, they didn't call it, but Terrell Edwards got him down. Yes, they did. Okay, the referee's back See, there. once again, penetration by the Oregon defense. Terrell Edwards in there to make a play right there. Bino puts a lot of pressure on that right knee. You don't think about it when you're in the ball game, but as soon as the play's over, you realize something's not quite right again Edwards number 49 just rolled right there you put so much stress on that right knee second down and 16 yeah that had trouble written all over it. Mario Bailey the intended receiver down goes the flag on Daryl Smith well Daryl Smith has to know he has to know that when his team is going to blitz he must make the receiver go to the outside you cannot let an offensive wide receiver cut inside on a blitz because you have no help. You have to use the sideline boundary as another defender. And he let the receiver inside and had no option but to get in there before the ball came to the receiver. Puts him in a tough position where you've got to play through the man to play the ball and either give up the reception or if you do go after the ball, it's tough timing on that. Smith has already been burned a couple times today by Mario Bailey. He's going to play that very aggressive. 4.57 remaining in the third quarter. McKay at the top of the screen and two receivers right. Here comes Barry. Trying to go around the short side of the field. Watch Aaron Pierce, the tight end, number 84, trying to get outside to get some leverage Second down, on Edwards. Able to, able to get speed. just enough to let Jay Barry get around the field. Second and four. Barry trying to pound his way through. Third down and seven. And got an injury to Malapai as he is trying to work his way off the field. Six. Check that. 5'11", 254. Todd had talked about it earlier. He is one compact player. Played at St. Louis High School in uh, Hawaii. And for those familiar with uh, what kind of football is played at that school, he played on a team that never lost a high school game. I mean, they just don't lose there. They won about seven or eight straight state championships in Hawaii. Third down and two. Washington going with a double tight end formation. Leif Johnson, the man in motion, they go to Barry. Fighting his way, I don't know, last week against Washington, going fourth and short from deep in their own territory with very little to gain. Fourth and goal. Doesn't look like he made it. Lost a yard. Terrell Edwards with a great play in the Husky backfield. 
Give a lot of credit to that Oregon defense. Once again, they make some big plays when they have to. Well, and let's not forget, Oregon plays great physical, physical football. Not the biggest team in the world, but they do have some speed and quickness. First and 10 then for the Ducks. Revive somewhat now. Two receivers to the left side. Still looking for their first points of the day. Sean Burwell with one of his better runs of the day. Good for about eight yards. Burwell showing some of that acceleration. Well, this is the longest running day by a running back for Oregon. Burwell, Second eight down, yards. Go now Oregon has 23 yards on 15 carries. Tough afternoon. <laughs> only, a, only a total of 38 for the whole Oregon team on the day. He's not alone, though. Second down and two. Again, two receivers left. They go with Shedrick. Got the first down. Here's, here's what Todd had talked about earlier as yeah. far as yards. Offensively, the first two games, they averaged 454 and a half yards. And then in the last four games, it's just kind of gone downhill. They haven't been able to put things together. And they've only averaged about 270 yards per game. And they're not, and they're they're not getting the ball in the end zone either. Right. Only six touchdowns in the last four weeks. First and 10. Moose, oh, wide receiver move, yep. Ronnie Harris on the top of your screen. Does that coincide with the injuries, like the defense, or what? Well, obviously, O'Neal was uh, you know, right. off to a pretty good start this year. He threw four touchdown passes against Texas Tech, tying a school record. And then against Utah, they, they just couldn't get things going. Utah's pressure defense, you hear that in basketball, but pressure defense, and the teams they've seen since then have used that pressure defense to slow them down. First and 15 after the encroachment. Better hurry. Uh, oh, Jeff Thomason, wide open. He'd still be running if he'd have made the catch. Washington rolling the dice on that one, sending everybody but the equipment manager. And Prost had had it. He had his man. Well, you talk about execution. It's back to the old Tex Winter line. Uh, asked him about his team's execution. He said, well, we'll consider that on Monday. <laughs> but here's a, a situation where you've done everything right except throw and catch. Yeah. We go back to our game keys at the beginning of the game. Oregon has got to take advantage of those big play opportunities on offense. There was one there that was not taken advantage of. Second down and 15. The shift defensively. Eight men up. Wanting to throw to Jones. Oregon needs 15 yards. It's third down. And three receivers to the left. Groston. Comes to Marco Farr. Donald Jones throwing it up for grabs. Tommy Smith, interception. But that's a situation where he can't throw that ball where he threw it. Contrast that to the way Musgrave played in the first half, the point that we were making. Never throw the ball late, back deep, over the middle. There's just too many people in there. The ball's in the air too long. You've got athletes like Tommy Smith. Something bad is going to happen if you're a quarterback. Looked like a late hit maybe on Croston as yeah. he got rid of the ball because that's uh, where the flag was thrown. Look at that, 85 yards. Ball all the way up to the 41-yard line now as Burwell has met. The Huskies have given up a total of two touchdowns in the second half all season. One of them was last week against California. Second and 10 back on the 41 of Oregon. Busted play more than likely. Well, we don't know if it was close to the or Burwell. Right, or Burwell, so we, we won't make judgment. I would tend to think it was Burwell. I mean, uh, Croston, because the scheme looked like he was trying to go left. Two weeks ago, in the huddle, Kyle called the play and never gave the snap count. And nobody in the huddle asked him what the snap count was. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, they're just lacking some leadership there. And those are the things that I think Musgrave was giving them in the first half. Yeah, not too bad with that broken finger, he had to come out. Well, the Three. reason they call that an option play is because you're supposed to have an option, but when <laughs> people are going the right way. Third down and 11. The draw, nothing doing. Lunchtime. That's the sixth tackle for loss by Washington today. Reggie Rogers, one of the first there. Or excuse me, Tyron. How many times have I said that this year? That's only twice. Twice? That's pretty good. That's only twice. Seven Tyron games. Rogers, the starting nose tackle. Transfer from Oklahoma. Set out a year. Backed up John Cook last year. This time in the 
Oregon Duck backfield again. That's it for the third quarter. Three in the books, one to go. We'll be back. So far, a field goal of 33 yards by Washington has been it in the second half. Pretty good boot. Napoleon Kaufman back to receive and returns it up to the 34-yard line. As you see, no one has scored on Washington in the fourth quarter. And it's 22 zip right now. First and 10. Jay Berry still in the game. Hobart still in the game. Huskies as they lay it off to McKay at the 40. Should have the first down. Crossing route. Good throw by Billy Joe Hobart. But Orlando McKay full stride. 11.9 is what he averages per catch. Picks up 11 right here for another first down. Again, Husky receivers improved dramatically coming across the middle. Andy Connor, the tackle, and Farwell in there to seal off the deal. Now first and 10. Three receivers going to McKay and Muhammad Oliver all over McKay. Good defense by Oliver. And Terrell Edwards all over Billy Joe Hobart. Billy Joe throwing it on the back pedal. Well, again, I go back to the schemes going in. Oregon knew they were shorthanded in terms of personnel, so you got to come up with ideas like this. You see Edwards coming in from the right of your screen. Let's put pressure on those guys. Let's not sit back and let yeah. them beat us. Yeah. Let's well, again, at least give it a try. If anybody knows how to defend against a Keith Gilbertson offense, it's going to be Denny Schuler who grew up with it. They made the thing up <laughs> together. That's right. Second down and 10. Hobart wanting to go deep. Scott McKay. First down at the Oregon 42-yard line. Play action. Again, McKay gets around his man. Eric Castle can't bring him down. Coda took a shot at him, and Oliver was able to come back and make the play. Down the DB roster for Oregon. Those are the guys that had shots at Orlando McKay on this play. It's the Orlando McKay show here in the fourth quarter so far. You see, first Oliver gets a look at him, then Coda and Castle, or excuse me, Castle and uh, Williams get a shot at him. And then Oliver gets a second chance and makes this one good. First and ten, one more time. McKay this time to the left, and Bailey to the right. Setting up the screen for Barry. He's down to the 20-yard line where Farwell meets him. Behind, you know, Matt Abahoney. I mean, you're down to your third string uh, defensive end. I'm laughing at the look on your face, Ty, when I say, what, no stats? He hasn't played. They've got so many injuries, they're trying to bring everybody in. Jay Barry. Little lip leg there and is able to slide in. Well, if anybody can coach defensive ends, it's probably Joe Sheffield, Oregon's defensive line coach. He's had a couple that have been pretty good. I think of guys like Dion Elshire, Mike Walder, Steve Bach, uh, all of those guys played in the NFL. And they've always had pretty good defensive ends. Third and one for Billy Joe, who's big enough to play defensive end. They go to Barry, and it'll be close again. Well, 40 remaining for Rich Brooks and his team. And they have put on a respectable performance today, trailing only 22 to nothing. Believe me, it could be worse. We've been here for the 54 to nothing with Arizona, the 56 to three with Kansas State. And Rich Brooks, if he had a, a full gun with all the bullets, he'd be giving Don James a heck of a game right now. Barry to the right side on uh, first down. Well, we had a shot of Brooks on the sidelines, and, and knowing Rich, he is disappointed, but not totally unhappy. That's right. a kind of a bizarre way to say it, but I think that's the case. He, he wanted to see after the California game a team to come out and play with some heart, play with emotion, play hard physical football, and they have. Offensively, they haven't done anything, but defensively, the backbone of his program has played very well. Second down and six. Ball on the 11 of Oregon. Billy's got to hurry. Here comes Vanderson again. There's Connor. Gets rid of the ball. Interception. My goodness sakes. That is not what you do when you're rolling out of bounds and supposedly you're better in quarterback. Well, you mentioned it, and I think maybe Billy Joe a little frustrated that uh, they haven't had more success in trying to make something happen that just was not there. Connor with the pressure, and as Croston did moments ago, when he threw one into the middle, and Chuck, you alluded it to, never, never. Who is he throwing to? Well, that's the question. Not only do you not throw it back over the middle, but you got to have somebody in mind to be throwing it to. There's nobody in there other than number 60s and 70s and 50s. That's so Kelly Malamala is about it. Brain lock on the part of Billy Joe Hover. John Burwell, nothing doing on the left side. 11.23 remaining in the game. It has been a less than sterling day offensively for the Huskies, and I'm sure the Huskies will be the first to say it. They were frustrated in that Cal game. Chuck, remember afterwards, they were, hey, we got to go back and do a lot of work. You're not seeing a lot of improvement today. 
to a couple of turnovers on the part of Washington, three on the part of Oregon. Only three, I'll say. Washington, the leader in the country in turnover margin. Second down and nine. Here comes the pressure. Tommy Smith, they get the pass away anyway to the tight end. Jeff Thomason running a long ways with it, but I mean. Well, he has good pass. size. He has great hands. Uh, recruited by SC as a swimmer. So, uh, whatever that means. <laughs> he did, he just, That's why he's he, got great hands. He decided not to go to SC on a swimming scholarship because he said he went up there and watched one of their practices and they practiced for about seven hours. He said, That's too long. Third down and five. Bonnie Harris to the left side, close to needs help, lays it off. Ooh, found Brian Brown somehow between Brett Collins and Walter Bailey. Three yard gain after all of that. Well, that's a lot of work for three yards. There's got to be a line about Thomas and something about his swimming and going up to be a duck, but I'm not going to, I don't know how to connect it, but there's there's a joke there somewhere. Croston, good presence of mind. Again, throws it late back to the middle. This time gets away with it. With 9.33 remaining in the game. Huskies still shifting around defensively. The rush was on. Kaufman from the 30. Casually stepped away from the first defender. Did you notice that? First man down there was the snapper, Willie Tate. A, a reserve tight end, but he just stepped around him like he was. Billy Joe Hobart still in at quarterback for the Huskies on first and ten after the punt of 40 yards and a seven yard return. Going deep, McKay, good for the first down right at midfield. McKay's been a busy man today in terms of recession, reception. Just catch and throw. Herman O'Berry makes his break on the ball, cannot get around Orlando McKay. Good job of McKay. Trips to the right side. And Matt Jones to the left, trying to swing across the middle. Now Billy Joe tucks it under his arm and is going to run. Gets about five yards to the Oregon 45-yard line, where after the scramble by Billy Joe. Huskies continue to go upstairs with the passing. And Demario Bailey O'Berry brings him down. At least there's some... You know, defender in the vicinity in the same area code. He's made some nice physical plays here. You can see again, he's right there. Doesn't take long to get Mario Bailey to the ground. Remember Herman O'Berry, also the guy that chased down Bean O'Brien on the punt. First and 10 from the 35. Bino, he must be all right. Trying to get outside Eric Castle, nothing doing. Castle coming up well, number 12. The junior out of Lebanon, two year Lebanon. Gotta bang himself up a little bit too. He's been bothered with a bad back. In fact, that missed a game because of that back. And just the way he's walking either a leg or maybe a lower back injury. Hit you to get along there. Good. He's as good a safety as there is in the conference, and there are good safeties in this conference. You can see him run here. Good pursuit angle. Doesn't give Bino a chance to cut back or outrun him to the outside. Yeah, he's hurt. See, he gets twisted up a little bit as they land. Get the game over with, and you know I know they have Stanford next week, but uh, and that's a game that I think the Oregon coaches believe if they can find some offense, they can win. Yes. But in terms of injuries, yeah. I guess is the point I was making. Enough is enough. Second down and nine. Holbert with all afternoon. Well, he had opportunities to make plays to get the ball in the end zone. They haven't taken advantage of him. On third down, Baylor. He's had a busy day in the touchdown department already. His 11 TD catches this season breaks the Husky record set by Dave Williams in 1965. Only three away from the Pac-10 season record. This makes 20 consecutive games that he has caught a pass. He is so dangerous after he catches the ball. Look at all these people that get shots on him. He almost gets away there from Coda. First and 10 from the 15. Again, they throw the ball. McKay wide open. Touchdown. Beautiful job of keeping the feet inbounds. Once again, the Huskies have great success with what they call the post corner route. You see nobody even in the picture. Randall McKay catches the touchdown. Muhammad Oliver hanging around the inside, bit on the post part of the post corner move. Hanson's extra point is good. Washington on top after the 15-yard touchdown pass to Orlando McKay. We should mention after this play, it is brought up to the 38-yard line. And that was the tight end, Jeff Thomason, by the way. Billy Joe Hobart now with 13 touchdown passes, three today. That's why the pooch kick is effective. First and 10. Jones to the right side and a receiver to the left and again movement. And it's going against Oregon. Since early in 
the second quarter. See Joe Farwell here, not too happy about the way things are going today. That was probably Brett Collins over there instead of Donald Jones putting the heat on Martin. The rollout, first interception, Washington. Interception, Croston trying to make something happen that isn't there. You can see the kind of little delay route. And if you ever saw Jones trying to get the ball to Ronnie Harris, Jones just hanging back there, makes the interception the first. Ball game at quarterback. And a nice round of applause for him as he came in. So it's first and 10. And Brunel goes to Kaufman. Round of applause partly for him, too, as Kaufman comes in. He's become a crowd favorite, Todd. Oh, he... Pure freshman. He's electrified. Yes. Uh, you know, he's got that great speed and quickness. Might be the fastest of the tailbacks. I guess Dino doesn't want to actually uh, race him in a 40-yard time to dash. <laughs> but uh, he's a tremendous athlete, and he's going to be a big, big part of this program for years to come. Now, Vito Bryant and Kaufman in the backfield at the same time. I'm still waiting for that one. <laughs> See a lot of backups in there for Washington. David yeah. Mack in it, wide receiver. It's offensive lineman, the first two teams virtually on the sidelines for the Huskies. And we've got movement. His chance to get on the field. Down to 525 remaining in the game. What a change a year makes. Mark Brunell was second leading rusher on this Husky team at this stage last year and had a great game against Oregon. What an injury can do to you. Hoffman, a lot of room. Well, we've seen that happen, too. Gets so excited. And now flags go down. You'll get a chance. We can look at the timing of it. Garcia trying to get downfield and make a block. Number 65. Is the block thrown after he's down? There you see Clearly. Napoleon down and Garcia. Oh, gee. Not only is it a personal foul, it's a clip. Would have been yeah. a <laughs> You're going to feel like the Oakland Raiders of old. Yeah, yeah 11, 11 105. 105 yards. We've got the Miami Hurricanes dressed in purple here today. Third and 27. Hoffman. Ooh, got through somehow all the way up the midfield. No, he did either. Just a little dump off to Napoleon Kaufman. Kind of guy you just want to get the ball in his hands and stand back and watch. How does he get through this? Great speed. Yes, Ron yeah. Hardy missed an arm tackle, but that great acceleration. That's what coaches look for. The mayor, we knew we're short a player. The Huskies are short at least one player, and they have to call a timeout. James won't be happy with that either. Nothing drives a coach crazier. High snap, and it's blocked by Coda. And he could go all the way if he can get around the punter. And he's finally brought down. Nice play by Jay, Jay Barry and John was Riddell, but Muhammad Oliver makes the block of the punt. You get a look at just how important the snap is. Not only does it have to be low, but it's got to be on target. The snap from Bruce Bailey took John Riddell right over into the rush of Muhammad Oliver. Ted, Ted Cota getting his pulse taken, <laughs> making sure he's okay. And keep in mind how long it's been since anybody's Started from the line of scrimmage inside the Washington 20. Oregon's only six yards away. First and 10. Burwell. He could score if he keeps his feet. He does a touchdown, Oregon. First touchdown all year that the Huskies have given up in the fourth quarter. Direct result of special teams play by the Oregon Ducks. Burwell with a great run to get it into the end zone for the Ducks' first points of the day. And again, several reserves for Washington, but still, that is the first touchdown of the year given up in the final 15 minutes. 25-yard run by Burwell. Well, you can see not only the elusivity he has, but the burst that he has, too. He just hasn't yeah. had many holes today. And he finally got one, and boom, he's gone. Did a nice job of keeping his feet, too. Very well blocked. Again, the burst between DeMarco Farr and Danaka Smith. Then you see the heart. And yeah. Sean Burwell not going to get stopped before he gets into the yellow paint. Drake McCallum finally gets on the field. And his extra point is good. good. Mario Bailey with his 11th touchdown reception this season, setting a school record. Not only does this put the Huskies up 13 to nothing, but Mario Bailey breaks the school record for most touchdowns in a season with 11. Touchdown receptions. Yep. Receptions, yes. Play of the game was brought to you by Rainier and Rainier Light. Around here, it's Rainier. 421 remaining. 
Oregon will kick off. Tommy Smith with the barefoot. Tommy Thompson, rather, will be kicking off. Barefooted, huh, Todd? That's uh, full darn cold, but he's uh, always done that. Of course, he punts, but now he punts with he the shoe on. a shoe. That's right. When he kicks off, he uh, feels he does a better job with the shoe on. Guys like him that start those kicker jokes going around. Tommy Smith from the 15. Ooh, going outside. Stiff arms one man and is finally knocked out of bounds at the 29 by Muhammad Oliver. 37 yards rushing, 274 passing. Joe Farwell. When it comes to Hart, I think he has the biggest on that Oregon team. Darius Turner on first down. Farwell be only way 200, but uh, most of that weight might be in the heart. Yeah. He's, you know, he just played his heart out today, played so well, and yet comes up uh, on the short end of the scoreboard. Always been a fan of his. Anyone that could play at that size, inside linebacker, really incredible ability. A co-captain as a junior, not a senior, but as a junior. Yeah. Shows the respect okay. that he has from his teammates. We're, oh. not, we're not the only ones who think that he sets a great example. Second down and seven. Don't worry, Joe. You get the Huskies in Eugene next year. <laughs> Grinnell still a quarterback. Kaufman, the tail. Oregon with 129 total yards. They do have one thing to brag about, and that's that touchdown in the fourth quarter. Huskies Hobart with three touchdown passes today. Two to Bailey, one to McCarry. Third down and four. Kaufman finds the handle, gets away from a couple of the people. He's always about two people away from springing one. First and ten. And we've got 227 left in the game. Kaufman again, pops it this time, all the way down to the 42 yards to ten. Here we go again. Uh-oh. Trying to go outside, then cuts back in. Well, he made a lot of something out of virtually nothing. There you thought he was going to try to go all the way back across the field and outrun some people. But he made the decision not to do it. Gets into traffic here. Tries to get outside. No, I guess not. That was a good move. Yes. Lewis was so good at that. He could go for the big one or he could muscle with the best of them. Second and five. Darius Turner busted loose down to the 20-yard line. Only four yards coming into the game was his longest run here. You can see the Washington running backs getting through the line of scrimmage fairly cleanly here. Crawford the last couple of plays. This time, Darius Turner. On the 20-yard line, Huskies trying to put more up on the board with 49 seconds remaining. Toss sweep. Kaufman. He still got more than I expected. <laughs> 25 seconds to go in the game. Joe Krolik wide to the left side. They're going to give it to Kaufman. Nothing doing. And that's going to do it for the ball game. So Kaufman and Darius Turner with a couple of nifty runs and some good blocking in front of him. And that's going to end the game. Don James goes 12 and 3 against Rich Brooks in their series between the two of them. As the Huskies come up with a victory 29 to 7 next year, we head south to play in Eugene. Two of the longest in terms of tenure coaches in the Pac-10. 15th year for Rich Brooks and 17th for Don James. Huskies 7-0 overall. 4-0 in conference play. Oregon goes to 3-4. 1-3 in Pac-10 play. So 125 left in the game and Damon Hewitt is able to scramble for another Husky first down. Well, Bill Dietrich, his offensive coordinator, said he's learning clock management. He's learning to run audible, ball security. There's clock management as he headed out of bounds. Now, he had a pretty good convoy in Patrick Kessie in front of him, but he elected just to go out of bounds. He could have turned it upfield, though, and probably got a lot more yards. And keep in mind, in college, when you convert a first down, there is a timeout while they move the chains on the field. And Hewer throws it away. Nobody really down there. Fred Coleman in the end zone, but he was well covered. You know, there's Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator. All game long, he's been successful bottling up some of the passing attack for the Huskies by bringing pressure. But you can see it is in this drive here as the Huskies have to score. Oregon has not been bringing much pressure, and Hewitt has had a lot of time to scan the field and see what he wants to do with the football. It's been a long drive already for Washington, though. Ten plays that started on their own 25-yard line. Second and ten. This time, Aliotti did come with the blitz. Watch the inside linebackers. That's Roland Asher, 48. 
and 44. They come inside. That gets single coverage to Bruner, one-on-one -on -one with Chad Coda. So that time, Aliotti did come with the dogging linebackers inside. But Ewart read it and got the football to the hot receiver, and that was Mark Bruner. And he wants a timeout on the sidelines and goal against the defense that has just played tremendously all afternoon. But a quarterback that has put up some numbers and has taken this team from its own 25 down to the 8 now in the final drive. Both offenses sputtered throughout the game. All of a sudden, Oregon's behind, and they managed to go 98 yards. They kick off to Washington. Now, Washington putting together its best drive of the afternoon, too. So both offenses responding to the call here late in the football game. Good under pressure. And picked off at the four-yard line. Oregon with the interception. And down the sideline goes Kenny Wheaton. He may score. There's no one near him. Kenny Wheaton. And what an ending. from the Oregon defense inside. Hewitt recognizes this, but he's got to go one-on-one -on -one all the way across the football field, throwing to the far side of the field. Wheaton in coverage on Dave Janoski. Wheaton knew the ball had to be in the air a long time. He was able to take a good angle to the football, and then he just turns it on and goes all the way down the other end of the field to ice this football game. And this stadium is rocking. David Yurid read the right guy.